that had just come out. The Ray of Glory. Right. Which was amazing. I mean, yeah, it just totally blew me away. His guitar playing is amazing. The songwriting is really, really excellent. That, Do you guys plan on doing Keep On Rocking in the Free World again? Uh, it'll be kind of probably a last minute call like it usually is, you know, it'll probably be somebody approaching somebody else and saying, do you feel like playing a song tonight? And since that's the only song that we know, that'll probably be the song. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if we're going to play. With, are we playing with him tonight? I don't know. We don't know. Well, what about the, the crowd? Do you find that, like, when you're playing with Neil Young, is it a different kind of crowd that you might usually get with you guys are headlining? Uh, it's a little, it's it's a little bit more diverse, but I, we only show, shows we play with them were in Europe, so um, other than the Brood School, so it's kind of hard to gauge what the normal crowd, what our normal crowd would be in, say, uh, Finland. I mean, you, it's, it's pretty, you know, we've never played <laughs> but I mean, them before. In comparing to other crowds, I mean, there's a lot of young people there, and definitely, and so it's not it's not drastically different. And, and, and any other shows that we've done, so. Now you guys, you know, could easily headline any gig you wanted. How come you're like opening up for all these bands? You open up for Neil Young, you open up for U2. Is it something you prefer to do? Or? That's an experience. I mean, it's, uh, and, and a lot of it's because it's fun. I mean, it's, I mean, going out and actually playing with Neil Young and, and watching, you know, the, the, the type of players that, that his band is right now, it's, something you can draw upon and actually learn something from so definitely I mean I, 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 whether we're headlining or not headlining or whatever it's just fun to go out with bands that inspire you and that's you know, whether they're whether they're drawing people or not drawing people or whatever that's that doesn't really matter you know and when Neil Young asks you if you want to do some shows you kind of what do you say you kind of do it yes sir exactly what about playing with Soundgarden again? It must be a familiar feeling to you guys. Do you guys like feed off of each other when you play, or is it? Is it well, we're pretty good friends, and the fact that we're going to see them play a bunch of new songs today is really exciting to me. So, uh, I mean, how many new songs do they play? Well, supposedly, like they've, they've been playing like at least half the set or more of new awesome. songs, which is, I mean, that 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 to me is something that I've looked forward to for a long time. So, I mean, this next record of theirs is going to be. Very cool. What about next record, yours? Uh, tell us a little bit about like, what's it called and. Oh, well, this and week, <laughs> uh, th I think it's called Five Against One, and uh, it'll be out like uh, I think the second week of October. And uh, we're pretty excited about it. I mean, I I think we all had a pretty good time making the record, so or at least from my angle on it. It was a really fun record to make, and it could have been a, a, a hard record to make, and it wasn't, so. And a, and a lot of that had to do with with, with, with Brendan O'Brien, the guy who helped make the record with us, and just the, the setting, and, and us all kind of, you know, relaxing and being open-minded enough to, to make it happen, and. I guess it could have been a harder, I mean, now that now that you guys were so famous, it's not like when you were recording your first album and your debut, debut album, there wasn't all that pressure. Did you guys feel like, you know, here's our sophomore effort, you know, there's all that expectation. Did you guys even worry about it at all? Or how I think we had internal expectations of just like wanting to make a record that we all liked and we all, you know, felt better about than the last record. And uh, I think in general, that's, that's enough of a, a motivator. I don't think any of us were really too focused on the on the outside because I don't think we ever have been too much in the past. And I think when we focus on what we want to do and what makes us happy in general, that generally translates probably to to people liking it better anyway. So, did you uh, approach the songwriting and the recording of it differently than you did with Ten? Actually, we were uh, we we sort of. Uh, the general process is when you make a record, or at least it's been kind of established as the general process, uh, that you record all your basic drums first and then you start doing guitars and bass and you overdub everything you, you want to fix. And, and then at the very end of the you know six or eight weeks, you do all this overdubbing, you mix the whole thing. And, and we decided we kind of wanted to keep it a little bit more spontaneous. And uh, so what we did was we record one or two songs in a week or you know three songs in a week and 
and finish, finish them off completely. So everyone was like in the studio, same week. Do you like the song? <laughs> you know, what what's working for everybody? What's not? Let's make a decision about it now, rather than like, oh, okay, well we can fix it in you know a month and a half in the mix, and we'll just bring somebody else in to mix it or whatever. So and that kept that kept things really fresh and kept everyone really involved in it, especially you know just having everybody there and keeping everybody fresh. It was a good thing. Um, I've heard that it's it's very varied that the, the the songs are much more varied in the sounds that you. Yeah, I think. I mean, I I think you strive for that. I think on the first record we really strive for that. But I think since we'd only been a band for three or four months, it, there was only so much we could vary. And uh, I mean, we definitely, you know, took some chances, and there, were, you know, probably a couple of the chances people will perceive as being you know, failures, but um, uh, from, from my end of it, like the chances that we took and we actually followed through with and the things that ended up on the record ended up being really cool, you know, and, and you know, th those will be things that we'll, you know, we'll have a little bit more confidence in the next time we go around and that's kind of what it's all about, is like growing, you know, and when you stop growing then it's over. Are you guys going to be playing any of the new songs live tonight? Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. Um, which ones? That happens about. Five yeah, we, kinda, we always do. A, it's kind of we stress each other out by making a set list, right? Before we go on stage. <laughs> yeah. What do you want to play? Tonight? I don't want to play that song. What do you mean you don't want to play? <laughs> no, it's it's kind of our ritual to not make any decisions till right before we. Yeah. Have you played them out? That is. Yeah, we've we've played, we've played. I think we have played every song, at, at one point or another. Yeah. What kind of reactions have you been getting? Look uh, warm. <laughs> really, <laughs> really bad reactions. We're kind of worried about <laughs> this record. <laughs> We've been doing fine. Canada has been very good yeah, for our Canada's, confidence. Canada's been a blast, actually. Yeah. What about which? Which is going to be the first single? And are you going to have the video and just that whole marketing rigmarole? Uh, we haven't decided on a first single. And uh, actually, uh, Beth, Eddie's girlfriend, has been shooting eight millimeter. Uh, film for the last few few weeks on in the European tour and over here, and I think him and her and Eddie are gonna put something together, which is good. Oh. Spontaneous inner family videos rather than high budget, well. slick. <laughs> we, you know, our tenth VMA is coming up, and we're going to do like a piece on sort of the history of music video. Um, the Buggles? The Are the Buggles, Buggles going to be any? Buggles Trevor Horn? Video killed the radio star? Probably. They were the first video on Huge um, video. <laughs> you think that video has come a long way, or is it sort of stagnating? The, the genre of music video, the medium? Uh, it's huge right now. You probably don't have enough tape to actually... <laughs> we, could, we could probably philosophize on that subject for a long time. Mm -hmm. um, I, you know, I think there's some valid things about, about video. At the same time, I think uh, people get really lazy, and that's all they do is like watch TV. And uh, I think when you're talking about something like music, it's it's an audio thing first. It's a hearing thing, and uh, people start to rely too much on their eyes, and they're not relying on their ears. And I uh, that 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 would be like you know in a few sentences that would be something I would see that is maybe. Something I don't like about it. But. Now, Jeremy's been nominated. Hey guys, uh, excuse me. If, if I could just, excuse me. I'll stop. Forget it. Is that last one? You're watching the weekend one, right into the camera. Okay. Hi, I'm Billy Corgan from the Smashing Pumpkins. I just quit the Smashing Pumpkins and I'm playing Pearl Jam now. And this and is Randy McLaughlin of the McLaughlin group. Known as Pearl Jam, you're watching The Week in Rock. <laughs> there you have it. Soundgarden did the same thing. They, they, they like 